This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. Hi there, today I share another bite-sized clip of a previous episode. In this case, it was episode 115, and most likely will appeal more to cricket fans, though there is definite overlaps into other sports as well. My guest was Jeremy Snape, who I was really grateful for having the opportunity to chat with. Jeremy was a former England cricketer, and now an executive coach and leadership coach, and we went on to have a fascinating discussion about mental preparation, about how our brains can hijack ourselves in high-pressure situations, and Jeremy goes on to share some really fascinating stories and some ideas to be able to help you. I think what I've learned is that our brain's built for safety, our brain's built to keep us safe, and any time we go into a high-challenge environment, we can easily catastrophize that into a high threat environment where our self-esteem's on the line, our professional reputation, our ego's on the line. So basically our brain hijacks us often and, and people probably will relate to this if you've ever been asked to read out in the class or, or speak at a you know best man's speech or, or speak in a conference or something. Your brain tells you that you want to get out of the way of this challenge where you're going to be judged by all these people. So you start speaking really quickly. And that's basically your brain saying, get back into row C, into your quiet, comfortable seat in the shadows, get out of the spotlight and let's get this out of the way as fast as you can. So your brain scrambles, you think irrationally and you walk and talk and move much faster than you would normally. And and often for elite performers where you're putting in golf or you're throwing darts or you're about to face a spin bowler in India, you need to be calm and you need to be patient and you need to be relaxed and you need to be instinctive because that's how you learnt your skill. Yet now in this high pressure cauldron of judgment where your brain's starting to think about what the newspapers are going to write tomorrow or what's going to happen if you lose and all those sort of social judgments, you actually don't watch the ball in the moment and that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I think if I was going to advise that um you know, cricketer out in the fields in India, I would say slow down, think calmly, um, one ball at a time. Remember the past successes that you've had. You know, you've been a good enough cricketer to be picked for England. So it's not like you're just a beginner. Go back to your strengths and try and do the basics brilliantly, one ball at a time. But of course, instead, I was rushing, walking around like a madman, hurrying around, wasn't thinking what I was doing and tried to hit the ball into... Mumbai and we were playing in Calcutta at the time so it was a pretty optimistic shot so I got that wrong but I think we can all relate to those moments of emotional hijack and and actually the challenge for me isn't necessarily beating India it's staying true and managing my own mind and managing my own state so that I can perform and deliver my best performance whether that's a, a corporate speech which is my new type of performance or whether it was you know playing in a tense final in a cricket match right you i could take this a hundred different ways now from what you said i love the start of the the episode there so i'll, I'll go with the the one ball at a time approach obviously we, we hear that an awful lot don't we in in cricket and in different sports so it sounds so 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 straightforward and easy how is how can you actually help a performer at get into that mentality? Well, I think we tend to see our sport as a continuous game. So if you like, golf might be a good example that you might think you're playing golf for four hours, but you're actually playing golf for 21 minutes and there's a lot of walking around that. So playing golf is standing over the ball, assessing the distance, assessing the swing, assessing the club, assessing the landing position of the ball, assessing the swing shape that you want to play and then choosing it, calming yourself down and executing that shot. And then as soon as the ball's up in the air and hopefully up in the air, um, you know, you're off and into the next phase. So the timer stops. 
So the time between shots, the time between balls is actually the most fascinating. For me in cricket, most people talk about the highlights, which is the clock starts, the camera starts, the bowler runs in, the fast bowler, all angry, all sweaty, runs in, comes past the bowler, jumps up, delivers the ball with all their aggression. The batsman hits it, ducks from it, gets bowled by it, whatever happens. And then the, you know, the, the, the sort of highlights are over. To me, I'm fascinated about what happens in the low lights, the time between balls, as the batsman steps away to square leg, as the batsman's starting to think about reviewing the last delivery and sort of almost like a car wash. You're trying to get that last ball out of your system, whether it was a great shot or a terrible shot. Neither of them are relevant. You just need to take the lesson from that to be wiser and more skillful in the next moment. So it may be that you now know that the ball is spinning or swinging. It, it may be that the ball is faster than you thought it was. It may be that the ball's keeping low. All of those things are useful for the next ball. So we then need to prime our sort of conscious mind to say, OK, make sure you're hitting the ball straight back past him. You know, don't predict what it's going to be, but just get yourself into a good balanced state. And we can use little counting techniques, little breathing techniques to refocus our mind. And ultimately, when that next ball is released, even though our brain wants to keep us safe and to predict what this angry fast bowler is going to do, that's often the wrong thing. And even though you might be on the back foot premeditating the bouncer because your brain's telling you, watch out, he looks scary and he's swearing a lot. Actually, it might be a half volley and you should have been with your weight forward. So the key to staying in the moment is having these little mini structures and performance routines that bring structure not only to your physical mannerisms and habits, but your psychological habits. So we often see people scratching the crease and moving their thigh pad and twiddling their back between balls, and they do it every ball. Now, that is a physical habit or a mannerism. What I'm interested in is what are the psychological hooks that are, you know, and, and sort of boundaries that are happening. So, for example, you might step away to square leg. And while you're looking around the field, you might say, OK, how did that last ball go? What felt good? What do you need to do for the next delivery? Where do your weight need to be? OK, so weight forward, try and hit the ball back past the bowler. That's all good. Are you ready? And it's only at that point then that I punch my thigh pad and say clear. And then I start twiddling my back, take a big breath in so that I've, you know, relaxed my shoulders and I've relaxed my diaphragm and I feel really focused on my breath. And then I tap the floor with my bat and saying ready. And that ready is a psychological cue to clear my mind of all the technical stuff that's been going on. But every ball I tap the ground. So why don't I anchor that with a psychological trigger that says, OK, forget last ball. Now it's about focusing on the next one. Let's be clean. Let's be instinctive. Let me respond to what I see rather than premeditating everything and feeling completely pre-programmed because that's that's dangerous in instinctive sport. And I would imagine as well, if you've I don't know if you've been struck on the helmet or you've been yeah, you've been shaken up or you've had an opportunity to knock it to the boundary and you've missed through a lot of people that that's gonna like, mess with their routines and they're they're gonna find it difficult to to execute and follow through in that way. Yeah, that, that's part of the game. You know, that's why I said at the beginning, I think, yes, playing against India or yes, playing against your local club rival, you know, in the Bedfordshire League or, or wherever you are, that feels like the big thing. But actually, that's not the battle. The battle is with yourself and with your emotions and with your thoughts. Standing in the middle of that sports field on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday lunchtime, and you've got to see your team through to a draw or through to the lunch break or whatever it might be. And you're battling with your own frustrations. You're battling with your own ego that you should have hit it for six or, you know, you, you mate up the other ends on 90 odd and you're still on 20 odd. Those are all comparisons. Those are all distractions. You know, the guy at Gully's just chirped me for, you know, what I look like or, or what I'm wearing or whatever. That That's them trying to distract me from my process. and creating that little bubble of excellence and my best habits. You've got to stay in there as long as you can. And I've worked with some of the world's best ever players, you know, international record-breaking test cricketers. And 
this is what they do. They focus on their breathing. They focus on their self-talk between deliveries. They focus on almost, you know, creating each moment as a golden nugget or a pearl and stringing it together into a necklace. And if you can make that necklace, you know, a hundred pearls long, then you've probably batted for a couple of hours and you might be close to a century. But if all you're doing is thinking about your runs and if all you're doing is thinking about, you know, what the newspapers are going to say, then you've lost focus on the ball. And that's the only thing that matters, the next delivery. It was great to chat with Jeremy and nice to listen back to the episode too. It's always nice to actually hone in on a specific area. So obviously in this case, we're looking at pressure and dealing with pressure and hearing it from a professional, an international cricketer, talk about some struggles and share some vulnerability. Well, that's also nice to hear. We've all been there in our chosen sports or our chosen roles when it comes down to pressure and we've had some difficulties. I'm pretty sure things haven't gone according to plan all the time for you too. So I'd like to reiterate really the importance of process and creating a rock solid routine for yourself. And you know, you might be listening to this podcast episode from a good place. So yeah, if you're a cricketer, maybe batting in the nets over the winter period has made you feel quite good. You're feeling quite confident going into the new season and likewise as a bowler too. However, what I'd say is it's very easy to get comfortable. It's in our nature to get very comfortable and maybe your routine needs shaking up just a little bit. It might give you an extra 1, 2 or 3% when it comes down to your performances this coming season. Especially in those high pressure moments as Jeremy talked about. So here's a three step process I'd like you to follow. Firstly, why not get a pen and a bit of paper out and press pause here and write down your batting or your bowling routine. It might have one step, two steps, three steps. It might even have 10 steps in it. What you think are are very, very important for you when you go about your business. So it might include, as a batter, going for a little walk, doing some gardening. You might want to keep a close eye on the position of your stumps. Perhaps you'll hone in on the ball in the bowler's hand, as well as a lot more. And after you've done step one, when you've written it all down, I'd like you to consider some factors here. Think about your emotional state. What is your ideal emotional state when you're batting or when you're bowling? Do you need to be a little bit angry? And what can you do about that? So if we go with a bowler this time, maybe the bowler does need to be angry, especially a fast bowler, so they can get an extra few miles an hour out out of a delivery. So how do you get yourself into that state? What do you need to do to shake it up? One thing could be keywords or cue words. You might have up your sleeve something to increase your aggression. Be aggressive. Be brave. Or, if you're that batter facing the fast bowler, calm, composed, patient. And then you've got the use of your eyes. What do you do with your eyes? Really think about this when you're at your best. How much detail or lack of attention do you pay with your eyes? Do you visualise shots that you're going to play? Or deliveries that you're going to bowl? Do you see very small target areas as a bowler or larger areas perhaps. There's no right way or wrong way here. The key is, is to understand what it is that works for you. So I'm hoping some of those suggestions you can integrate into your routine. So how do you integrate it? Well, this is where step three comes into it. Practice. That's right. Experiment. Experiment on a regular basis. Add some of these factors that I've mentioned into your routine or have a play around with your routine. Jeremy alluded to top cricketers, top athletes. They don't leave things like this to chance. They're very meticulous in their methods. So I'd encourage you to give this a try and please do send me an email. My email address is info at sport-excellence.co.uk. You can DM me too on some of the social media platforms. I'd love to know what tweaks you've made to your routines. Let me know how you get on over the coming weeks. Take it easy. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sports psychology resources.
sport-excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.